driver is uh, showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject says to hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the arches just before the gate. You want to place your vehicle in the park and go ahead and turn it off for me? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, park? Oh, it isn't park yet. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me, all right? What's you guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got the supplies and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hit the, the, the bump there. <laughs> I was distracting him from driving, I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? You got it, buddy. I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, you're fine. Hey, I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I just really stress. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I hate to forget an organic juice bar, but I just quit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's, oh, what, okay. that's my that's job. Cool. And I just um, quit my job to travel across the country, and I'm trying to start a blog. And okay. I just have a blog. So, so I've been building my website, so I've been really stressed, and I didn't really believe that I could do any of it. So that's kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like a downer. I don't know, we've just been fighting all morning, and... <laughs> And he wouldn't let me in the car before. And Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because <laughs> you have OCD? He told me I needed to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm. I'm calm all the time. And he really stresses me out. And I just, and this is a rough morning. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be putting handcuffs on you. You obviously don't have any weapons. I'm going to get you into the air conditioning, let you take a breath, relax a little bit, and then I'll come back and talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. Alrighty. Like I said, you're not in any trouble. So, just go ahead and take a seat. What's that? Yeah, I just spoke to her. So, you want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. Alrighty. Come on over here. You're not in any trouble right now. So, tell me what's going on. The shoes gets worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her, so like I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. You know, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything, so I give her time. And I, we, we really had a nice morning, if any, and if anything, but um, she just got you know, worked up because we were trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go um, like our just point us up at the time. Okay. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had it stuff on her hand, that's why I was pushing her away, because I. She, she wanted. The, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, "Let's just take a breather and let's not, you know, go anywhere. Let's just calm down for a minute." She's getting her worked up, and then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys to me. So I got away. I was just trying to. I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go. Let's let's just take a minute, step back, and breathe. And you see, she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. That's from a wire. Yeah. You want to tell me about hitting that curve? Hitting the curve was her grip on the wheel. Grab the wheel. Yeah, she said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over in this. What about the speed? Did she take over the, did no, she take I over the pedal on you? If I was going fast, I'm sorry. No, it's probably just the, 
a moment of I'm still shaking now. The adrenaline, seeing the lights flashing up, and then the herb grabbing the wheel. And, so if I sped up, I'm sorry about that. Or if I was speeding beforehand, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's just it been took quite a bit to catch up to you. So oh, sure. yeah. I'm sorry about that. We're just going into the the park again to get water because we have a six gallon water container to uh -huh. fill up. So we're just grabbing water to fill the hike. Okay. And we're just I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because there's plans still to go for a hike. But it's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Of course, of course. Do me a favor. You want to go ahead and just take a seat right over here on the curb sure. for me? And if I was speeding, I'm sorry. My apologies. You don't have anything in that pocket or anything like that, do you? Nope. Just the wallet? Yeah. All right. And then, do you mind lifting your shirt so I can check the waistband? Yeah. I got Turn around for me real quick. Perfect. Nothing. I just, I just no, want I to make you. sure. That's all, man. Go ahead. Do me a favor. Take a seat. All right. Okay. Oh, do you have your ID on you? In the car. If you want to come with me. No, no we'll just do this. Just go ahead and take a seat. You come with me. I'll give you fine. Uh, what's your first name? Brian. Brian? Is that a layman spelling? B-R-I-N. Yeah, and L-A-U-N. -N. And then your last name? L-A-U-N. L-A-U-N. D-R-I-E. D-R-I-E? Yep. Laundry? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your date of birth, Brian? I'll say crisscross applesauce, but can I just sit in the shade because I'm bald? Um, I'll, no, give it's okay. it's okay. I'll give you some shade. <laughs> Sound good? Alrighty, just hang tight for me. SO229. I need a 29 by name and date of birth. First name Brian, layman spellings, last name Laundry. Lima Alpha Uniform, November, Delta, so back, back, Romeo, back, back. India. Bravo, Romeo, India, Alpha, November. And then what? And his reaction was to do what? It's gonna be out of Florida. He just grabbed you. Did he? Did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him. But you know, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth. If he actually hit you, because you know, where did he hit you? No, don't worry. Be honest. <laughs> Slap your face or what? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So has he been drinking? No, we don't drink. Okay. What was up with his driving? I saw just that he hit a curb. Uh, I, I. While you're driving? Well, he was driving. While he was driving, you were hitting him? Uh, uh -huh. Jordan, tell him all this. I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was she was hyperventilating. She's a little saying bit. that they don't drink, but at the point when you lit them up, they don't drink or anything. I, she I started was hitting yeah, him. I was yelling at him, and then when and you turned your lights on, I like kind of punched his arm. Like there's a. She's saying like hit the curb. You said it was, it was Gabby. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm really bad. It was Gabby. Yeah. But you tend to have a lot of anxiety and stress. <laughs> a lot of anxiety. And what's his name? Easy. Is it Brian? Is he usually pretty patient with you? Yeah. Good morning. But I guess it just makes me that I know that he definitely gets frustrated with me a lot. Way of taking my anxiety and bringing it down, but my ex-wife, as much as my ex-wife, I'm just sharing. I know it's a little personal, but to help you understand. We would feed off each other's anxiety and spiral. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how much I loved her. It may be a bad for your soul. Just saying. I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but if you know you have anxiety, look at the 
look at the situations you can get in. You know what I mean? And we're not here to be mean to you or anything. Well, you, you know, they never. There's a first time, and then it usually. Let's just we'll go see what Brian's saying. But uh, I think you've heard everything now from. Quick you know, question: You said you were hitting him in the arm. Did you grab the steering wheel? No, I didn't. You did not touch, touch the steering wheel. I didn't touch wheel. the steering wheel, but only, only, only for like a second because I just saw the lights come on, and it was more just like you're an idiot, like you know. But did you grab the steering wheel and like no. swerve or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close this door again. Do you have enough air back here or do you want me to kick it up some more? Do you have any water? <laughs> I will see if I can find some. Okay, no worries. Thank you. You wouldn't happen to have any water, would you? Can I get a bottle? Did you already give a statement to this officer? Uh, I've got this gentleman here. Yeah. This gentleman noticed that you had some marks on your neck. She's got some marks on her too. We're just trying to figure out what all happened. And I know you probably already told the story. This officer is probably going to be the one handling the whole case. Do you want to? Do you want to listen to what he has to say? And yeah, okay. and then you tell him. And tell him what happened. We, so if you don't mind, start at the beginning for me. Over. Start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to go too far back, but we've been in uh, Beyond Land for the past like, week or so, traveling okay. around. And the flies here are like pretty intense, so the flies have definitely been getting to her. And then my feet are dirty and everything, so I think that our little squabble started because we were, we were hanging out at the coffee shop, and when we got back to the van, there was some dirt and stuff in the van, and uh, I moved our food around, it was a little disorganized, you know, so she gets a little... Will you take those two? Sorry about that. It's okay. Do you I, need any water? It's okay. It's hot out here. I was right? down, we were going to get water because we ran out, but no, it's I okay. No, it's alright. I don't like classic bottles. It's okay. Thank you, though. Okay. Um, but we just had a little disagreement there. And the disagreement was just that she was getting a little worked up and I was saying, no, it's okay, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's cool, but it's good. <laughs> um, so it was, just, it was just more of a disagreement and I just wanted to What was the this. disagreement about? It was, it was, I wouldn't even call it disagreement. It was just that I, I'm dirty and I can't change being dirty. Like I got dirty feet, I got sand in my flip-flops and stuff like that. Um, it was that we were at uh, the coffee shop for so long because we were there from nine to so I guess there's a few little little things, little just little mm-hmm. relationships. I don't know if you have a relationship with them. I've been married for over five years now. So. There's a lot of little things. That, yeah. yeah, I can go. Um, and we, I get we, it. Yeah. We really, it was, we weren't physical before the point where I said, all right, let's let's just take a breather and, and like walk away for a minute. I'll lock the van up and I'll go for a walk this way, and you can go walk that, that way in the block. You know, okay. there's a moon. Uh, I wanted to cut moon flower. Right, yeah. You know, nice areas. You can go either way, it's all shaded. So let's just go for a little walk and breathe or come back. It's pretty, yeah, we're happy with it. Um, but then, but she's, I, I'm not upset with her. She got a little worked up and she had a phone in her hand and her keys and everything. And she wanted, uh, not her keys, like her rings. She had her rings, her phone. And I, I was holding on to the keys because I just, I didn't want to go anywhere. And my big fear is, I, mean, I, I don't have my phone. I don't really, I don't have a phone. So she goes off without me. Car, uh, I'm on my own. <laughs> so uh, I was saying, let's just go for a walk. And she was trying to get the keys for me. So I was just going, hey, just wait back up, back up. And that's when she hit me. And I, I did, didn't get, I don't want to push you, but I didn't get, very, I didn't get overtly physical. I was just trying to keep her away and, and not get hit. And then I got really loud. And like, that's probably your everyone's attention where I was going. You know, back up, get away, just give me a... Oh, okay, so, so you I, said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, yeah. right? What happened after that? What got... Look at the scratches on your eye. The phone. The phone. So you push her and she hit you? She was... I wasn't... I, I, didn't, no, I, I feel bad. I didn't get so public. I was just trying to be loud. So this is... This, this, you know, I just try to make her calm down and be like, look, everyone's watching. And I'm like... Stop this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Whenever the lights flash on, it gets your heart rate up. 
everybody see me. Like, trust me, it does me too, and I'm the one that goes, <laughs> it yeah. gets me going a little you bit. You probably too. can say, hey, buddy, whenever <laughs> somebody walks up. <laughs> so, okay. No, I don't think so. No, no, none that I know of. Okay. Alright. Real fast, can I get your first name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle, how do you spell that? R-I-E-L-L-E. And your last name? Uh, oh, oh, P. I see. No. You guys both live in Florida, right? Or that's where you guys My come from? My license is Florida right now, but I'm from Florida. But that's where you have it out of currently. That's our good team. Gabrielle, Golf, Alpha, Bravo, Romeo, India, Echo, Lima, Lima, Echo, last name, Tico, Papa, Echo, Tango, India, Charlie, Oscar. She was trying to get in. She eventually couldn't get in and actually clawed her way in through the driver's door. He says, I don't understand why she's doing that. Well, I think it's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she could get through. So she's trying to get in over him. He's trying to disengage from her. I guess he hung her backpack on the back probably so she'd have her shit so that he didn't have to engage with her. Everything she's saying is the same thing. I haven't heard what he said, but if that's what he said, it's also what the witness is saying. The witness says, I never saw him hit her. I saw him shove her, but I couldn't tell you if it was an aggression against her or a defense against her as far as her, you know, being the aggressor. So at this point, from what, unless the guy's screaming that he 
used to go to jail and did something to this girl, it sounds to me like she is the primary aggressor. Yeah. Now, the problem with her being the primary aggressor is in an incidence of domestic assault, be it a male or be it a female, we shall arrest. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to go to jail. We can do a citation if it meets one of three criterion, which one of them is that we can ensure that they're not going to um, further risk each other's safety. But the problem with that is they live in the same vehicle. That's what I was going to say. The and other part of it is... There was actually I'm, I'm an getting... injury, too, to the victim, which is him. Right. And I'm getting conflicting stories about why they hit the curb up here. I what mean, did he say why he hit the curb? Well, I've watched... This is what I saw first. I saw him cross the double yellow. I was doing 42 miles an hour. I was, I don't know, probably two car lengths behind him. Tapping my whales at him, trying to get his attention. They knew I was behind him. And then after he crossed the double yellow, he merged over into the right lane. And then out of nowhere, just boom, went and hit the curb. So did he tell you why? He said that she grabbed the wheel and turned it real hard. She said that she was hitting him in the arm. So Sounds legit. I mean, I'm sure she, if I'm driving and my arm's on the wheel and I'm getting hit in the arm, I'm probably pulling out the wheel. Yeah. And I'm sure it was a little of both. I'm using the truth somewhere between. He's probably trying not to say that he hit her because he probably doesn't want her charged with assault. Yeah. Domestic assault. He probably would rather say she pulled the wheel than hit, hit him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, fortunately for her, she... We cannot treat just because he's bigger and stronger, and even if he's not willing to press charges, we time. can't treat this differently than if it was a male on female violence. Yeah. And we're going to have to charge her, and um, we can do a citation if there's some arrangement that can be made to separate them. And then we have to let them know that there's no contact order in effect. Yeah. And we have to let him know the only way to drop is to go into the police department during business hours and fill out a waiver. Which, by the way, what's it's today? Too late Thursday. Today. So it won't be till tomorrow. I know, and there until noon, I think. Yeah. Which well, I'm sure he's going to want to drop it. Well, the other part of it is they said that they're on a, they've been on four or five months that they've been living out of this van together. Well, this is really bad news. So let's talk to him first. Yeah. Is Brian? Yeah. Did you, did you ask him yet to take pictures of him? Yeah? No, I haven't so, done any of that yet. Brian, unfortunately, in the state of Utah, we don't have discretion on some things. Like, for example, if I pull you over for speeding and I want to give you a warning, I can do that because it's under Class A. It's a Class B or under. If I want to give you warnings for all kinds of stuff, I can. But there's a few things I can't. Like when I say I, please, I'm not in charge of it. One of the things that the state legislature doesn't give us discretion on is charges when it comes to a domestic assault. And it sounds like you guys are living together, so you, you meet the statute for domestic partners have injury and both an independent witness probably the next one we're going to talk to as well which we haven't talked to yet but one the ones we did talk to and your own companion have made it clear that she was the primary aggressor and that she was striking you and you just received injuries you have admitted to striking her she has not admitted to striking her the witness did not see you strike her so at this point you're the victim of a domestic assault that even, if you, <laughs> even if you didn't want to pursue this we don't have a choice the best thing we can do to not, the so lawsuit we have to charge her doesn't say we have to put her in jail, okay? But it also says we have to separate, there's no contact order, and we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And the little problem here is you guys are not afford to live in the van together. How are we supposed to separate her? Right? Now, I don't want to take this small 20, what is she? She's a 22 year old, 22 year old female in jail, jail. you could definitely defend yourself against, but at the same time, can't say because you're a male and she's a female, we can't treat this different than if you were the male hitting her. Or we got to treat the same. Yeah, so she's kind of in a tough spot. So unless you have an idea about how she could not go to jail and be separated, you have friends in town, somewhere she could stay. Tomorrow, if you want to, it's up to you. You can, can go, I go to jail. You can't because you don't have a charge for you. Now, tomorrow, you if you wanted to be with her again tomorrow, I'm going to take your radio. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be with her again tomorrow, because it's after five, so our office is closed, you can go to the police department and fill out a waiver to drop the no contact order so you guys can still be together, which is going to have a court date online. She's going to have to show up for a court date online and answer. The prosecutor might drop it. She might say, you, if you, for example, if you're not willing to pursue it, that's your decision. I don't say it definitely is. I'm not going to pursue anything. I'm not going to say I love her. It's a problem. I'm sorry that I had to get so public. Um, but, uh, so, 
I just want to get like the checklist of things I gotta do to get rid of this. So, so you want my back? Well, she'll get a paper with a court date. Right? How do I get rid of it? <laughs> well, the court date has to be attended in order for them to decide whether they need to continue or drop it. The first is just an initial appearance to say, are you who we think you are? Yes. Do you understand the charges that's been brought against you? Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer. Uh, do you have an attorney? Yes or no? Do you need one? And then from there, she can she can ask to speak to the prosecutor. The prosecutor might be contacting you and say, hey man, I, I don't see 110 pounds soaking wet and you're a big strong guy. And we understand you're not even wanting to pursue this when the cops have to call the statute. How you like, what, what, in the interest of you and justice for you, the victim, what do you think? And they can decide to still prosecute. Or they can decide to drop it, or they can decide to give her a plea and make it kind of go away if she behaves somehow. But that still has, does not eliminate the first court appearance that she has to attend, which thankfully for you guys is going to be online. So, you don't have to. so if you're out of town, so here's the thing, if you're out of town and she doesn't come into a court appearance online, they can suspend the driver's license, they can issue a warrant for her, so she needs to play ball. And yeah, yeah. Does that no, make sense? Yeah. And we're a very team, me and her and team, I'm sorry about all this, I apologize again, but so she's got her online court date, just uh, Acknowledge it's just her, and then she's got the one for the... Well, we, there's automatically right now, there's something called a no contact order in place. Yeah, From this point yeah, forward, yeah. until tomorrow, if you wish to drop it, you have to go to the 217 East Center Street, Long City Police Department. I've got all the papers. And you have to ask for the to you. If you want to fill out a waiver, then you're requesting a, wa a waiving of the contact order, no contact order. No contact order means she cannot come into contact with you, she cannot talk to you, she cannot text you, she cannot go on any premises. And until you drop that, or until a court date, if you don't drop it, it's the same effect until midnight on day four. And then that gives you time to get the text order, the text order a long-term one, if you feel like you need one. It sounds like you don't even want this one. So tomorrow, they open at 8, you can go into the police department, you can sign the waiver, they can remove it, then you can say, hey babe, where you at? Let me pick you up. And you pick her up. Now, we're hoping not to put her in jail, but if she doesn't have somewhere to go tonight, to be separate from you, I can't talk to her now because it's a separation, right? Yeah. So, tell me this. Do you guys have enough money for like a hotel room or anything like that? Because what we could do is we'd cite her for this, and then I'd give her a ride over to whatever hotel you guys is choosing. Pick up there tomorrow if you want to know what they On your way to go pick her up, you stop over there at the PD, sign the paperwork that they're requesting, and then you can go pick her up quite literally with the PDs. Unless you know someone else in town that's a friend, she can stay with you. Yeah. You know, unfortunately not, I, I don't, and I guess that, yeah, that sure hit the, I don't want her to go to jail. Well, it'd be, if she goes to jail, it's like, uh, it, that, that, that goes down somewhere, instead of her going to a hotel, right? If you get um, a citation, it would be... It, it kind of depends, so if she goes to jail, they're going to book her, and they'll take her fingerprints, yeah. and go out in front of her street, and then if they, if, if they don't convict her, then it will just show that it was dismissed. Like, it was going to show up in a criminal history, but the charge was dismissed. If she was found guilty, it'll show up that she was guilty of domestic assault. But the charge, will, the charge itself will show up on her criminal history until she gets to the department. Now, even if we give her a ticket, we're still going to take a fingerprint and it's still going to show up. Either way, it's going to show up. There's no way around a Class A. Or is this Class B? This is Class B. But Simple. they do require fingerprint on it. Yeah. Okay, so the other part is, is if you contact her or she contacts you, she can be charged with a class A. Well, which is a little bit different, but it doesn't help the situation. If you were to contact her and she responds to you, then she can get a new charge yeah. for violating her contact. No contact order doesn't restrict you, it restricts her. So if you go talk to her and we find out and you're not in trouble, she'll be in trouble. So it's going to be too interesting. Does that all make sense? No, I'm getting it all. It's a lot. I really quick. No, no, I yeah, I'm getting it all. I'm just trying to figure out a way. You don't know anyone in town? You guys been around long? No, I don't know anyone in town. If she went... She... Oh, I don't think she can. will take her with the aggressor. No. There's a window shelter. I'm curious. You can find out. Hey, she's going to go. If you did the citation, she, like, say she drove off in the... She could drive off in this car. We could give you a ride somewhere. So I got my backpack. It sucks for you. I got my backpack. You can spend I, the night. You want to drive me to Delicate Art? Does she have a good driver's license? This is her, yes, it is license, yeah. You yeah. Know, with your vehicle, and, yeah, she can. Well, then you'd kind of be homeless for the night. And, and I mean, I can't talk to her at all. Well, and I've got to do the, the thing so I can't go camping. We can tell her what it is that she needs to do to get, to get through all this and then let her know what the plan is. 
here, here's the problem though. If we take you up to Delicate Arch, you're going to be hoofing it from Delicate Arch all the way down to Moab Center Street so that you can yeah. fill out that paperwork because if you're not there by noon tomorrow, you're going to be looking at Monday on, morning. It's uh, early on Friday. Yeah. You, you'd be looking at Monday morning before you could actually see the right game. Again, we're not trying to make it live on that. This is written statute. There's nothing yeah, a lot of people about it. It's designed to protect victims of domestic assault. Not everybody's the same. This is different yeah. than normal, but we have to treat everything the same. And that's how it is. It's not easy to for a hotel. No? Uh, very, very, very little money you have, for sure. Um, you want me to, I'll call CK then. See if CK will take you for the night. I'll see if they'll, if they'll take you though. CK, CK, then we can figure it out. This is the way they take me. Oh. Uh, yeah, actually, CK will take yeah. him as a victim of this assault. CK will take him, and they yeah. will help you tomorrow. And you're like a block and a half away from the beach. Let's see if oh. CK will take him because they took, they actually put up, actually, they didn't take a guy, but they got a hotel for a guy last time. Yeah, I'll do that. CK we might get you a hotel. Okay. Now, what she does. I'm, I'm happy sleeping outside in the sleeping bag. No, no, I don't know. I think CK will get you a hotel. If you want her to have the van, we don't care. Yes, this is Officer Robbins with New York City Police Department. How are you doing this afternoon? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. So, I just did a domestic, and the male is going to be our victim. Is there any way that you can help us set him up with a place to stay tonight? Okay. 1099, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Well. The after hours guy isn't there at their office right now. He's gonna run from his house over there and we're gonna get y'all lined up. Don't worry about it, this is the phone call that they wait on. So don't don't feel like you are making anybody do anything extra. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible. We're not wanting to take her and book her or anything like that. No, I really, really appreciate it. And I know how rough this stuff can be. Like I said, I've been married for five and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe me, if I were to say that me and my wife haven't had our share of spouts, I'd be lying to you. She lives with anxiety. I live with a woman. No, who both has of us really. I know. I, her anxiety elevates my yes. anxiety, and sometimes it that's just. That's why I just. That's why I'm like. Sometimes I gotta, it just. I gotta walk away. I gotta breathe. Just and look in the back far as even then. You know, but I'm not gonna try and sit here and give you life. No, 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 no. You've been on this road. <laughs> Almost as long as what I have. There's nothing I can tell you that's gonna really make a difference. But at the end of the day, I, I'm sorry that no. this has happened. I'm sorry that it went to this. No, no, no. I'm sorry. To, but I'm, I'm sorry. Can I get my key and make like a little bag? Maybe you can grab me something. Yeah. Is that alright? Would you mind watching for me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just if you don't mind doing it from over here, we don't want you to get hit in the road. Okay. So.
that that's fine. I'm, I'm still going to be here for a few minutes dealing with this. So we have almost as much time as we need. <laughs> so his name's going to be Brian, B-R-I-A-N, last name Laundry is L-A-U-N-D-R-I-E. In laundry. Yeah, well, it's not why, it's IE at the end. Yes. So they were at one at Moonflower, the organic grocery store down the street from you guys, and they got into a heated argument. Both of them were saying it was over petty stuff. Um, he told her to take a walk so that she could cool off. She refused, broke into the car after he locked her out of it. She started trying to slap and scratch him. He pushed her away. They both got in the vehicle, took off, and I found him out here next to him. Which is... charging her with uh, domestic assault. So they, there's going to be a protection order set in place between the two of them until he's able to get over to the PD tomorrow because he doesn't want to pursue it, but I don't have a choice in this, as I'm sure you are well aware. So he's going to be wanting to go over to the PD first thing tomorrow morning as they open up to get the protective order removed. But that doesn't fix tonight. Sorry about that, go ahead. Yes, they both have Florida licenses. Of course. Well, the other part of it is, I don't, we don't think it's very likely, but with her as the uh, suspect in this, would you be able to put her up for the night? Okay. I figured, I figured, I just, I had to make sure I at least asked. It's better safe than sorry. So, I didn't know if that would make your life any easier or any tougher on it, so. Awesome, and if, you, if it's easier for you to just send me a text with a location, that works just as fine too. Sounds like fun. Thank you. What was your, what did you say your name was again? Peter Phillip? Phil. Okay. Alrighty, Phil. We'll talk to you later. Alright, cool. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Can I take two minutes of your time real quick back here? So, because there was an assault that took place and you were obviously showing signs of the strikes, do you mind if I take pictures of the injuries that you sustained? I know it's not super severe. I mean, you want me, you want me to call, I mean, I can call the EMS if you want me to. You don't seem like you want to, to go no, that far. If you want to take a photo, you can take a photo. Of yeah, I, just, I need to take pictures for my evidence because otherwise it's going to be your say, her yeah. say, my say, and the court's going, oh, so I have to do this part of it already. So it's just going to be a couple of times.
Yeah, just hang it up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead and tell me if you don't mind me crashing I can grab it because it's like it's in a spot. Why don't I go with you? Where are we going okay. in the car? Great face. Yeah. One of his uh one of his ring fingers, I think, has got the scratch on it. And you, you saw her later on. Yeah, I saw the ring. Well, I was trying to build some consistency between the stories. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. right. And then let me see your hand, because that yeah, let me get from that one. That one? That one? I know you said this is from a wire, but I'm going to take a picture of it just in case and I'll document that yeah, you're saying that's from a wire, not from her. It's just I want to document everything. You know? And then your right arm. Do you have anything on the other arm, on your back, chest, anything oh. like that? Let me get your neck real quick as well. Do you want to kind of tilt your head off to the right and look up? This way? And then look up. I don't know. Yeah. And then, this is just for precautions. Do you mind lifting your shirt for me? We can go back here if you want some privacy. I just, I want to, like I said, I want to do a very thorough job. I want to make sure that you don't have any additional injuries you don't need to know about. I don't know how hot I'm up to it. You mind if you put your collar down for me a little bit? On the other side? Alright. That one's it. So, I talked to my contact over there at CKD. The people that can help with hotel rooms and stuff like that I have at the office at this point home type of like a couple people trying to get well lined up because certain people have access to the corporate card, he doesn't. So we're trying to get everything lined up. This is gonna take us a few minutes to get that lined up, get her uh, cited and stuff like that. Like I said, we're gonna be handing her a piece of paper that has a book some of its date, stuff like that, and she'll be able to give you all that information. Well, yeah. You want to go ahead and finish getting your stuff with yeah. this check? Fine, gentlemen. Uh, uh, she's got her cell phone. She's calling her parents just to feel better. She doesn't want to not be with them today. There's That's no choice in the matter. Yeah. So. So parents, they'll go to school and see the light, or at least it's what said. Thank you. 
got a swollen right eye, scratches. So we gotta go find the tape. Was it intent and attempt, or intent or attempt? So if I intend, if I attempt to get past the intent is physical. All right. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Mm -hmm. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were, no. you, what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to hunt him. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. This is 100% your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your parents, okay? Okay. judge me for this. I am looking at a 110 pound female and her fiance who have no means to be separated. He doesn't want to pursue it. She's not a threat to him. More than slight abrasions from her fingernails. I I don't care if, if we use the actual letter of the law to, to not charge. But I also don't care because it literally does possibly make perfect sense to go full on domestic assault and do the whole thing. This is uh, your opportunity to make the decision. Let's.
got this? I'm making this decision. I'm going to side him. I'm going to go okay. all through the first Would you feel more comfortable here? handling that guy? Yeah. Go handle that guy. Go handle that guy. Okay. If you're more comfortable. Well, I'm. it's 6 one way, half dozen the other. It's up to you. I mean, it's a headache whether I go left or it's a headache whether I go Look, right. Another option is to not charge them but separate them for the night. If they find themselves together again, what is it to you? You separated them. You provided for his safety. If he doesn't have enough sense to stay away and you, you got him separated, it's on him. You can separate him and say, don't, don't let us go off till tomorrow. If, if they don't let it go off and we hear about it, We'll hear about it. They're camping in the park tonight, but like, no. And if there's some fighting going on, well, you already was, Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. You already gave him a chance. What you can't do, by law, is separate someone and say, if we hear from you again, we're going to arrest one of you. Because then if one of them really needs help, they may not call police and get help. The law says you cannot, literally, you may not say, we get more problems with you guys tonight. One of you is going to say, you can't threaten them like that. Right. It's true, because it stops them from wanting to call the police to get help. Does that make sense? Right. So, go full or nothing or in between and separate them and kind of give them the nod, the wink, like, hey, you know, just stay separate. It's up to you. I'm going to go handle that. You got very capable help with you here, and I trust you. Mm -hmm. I will. Alrighty, man. So we're still going to be going through. I do need some things from you, though. Do you mind if I get a picture of your driver's license? Yeah. Of course. I was thinking it was in parts like that. This is me. Uh-oh. I know this man has hair. <laughs> you said that this is still your mailing address, right? Mm -hmm. Still the right way. Alright, and then... Brian, what is the call number? Thanks, Fuzzy. Thank you guys for helping us. Oh, yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Oh, uh, my phone number? Do you have any problems with me taking a picture of it? I have to have IDs and stuff like that for my investigation. Oh. Here. So, this is what I'm going to do. I've decided I am not going to cite you for domestic violence battery, okay? It was only going to be a mm -hmm. Class B misdemeanor. However, the domestic violence portion of it enhances it makes like a major pain in the butt, especially at your 22, right? So I'm choosing not to cite you today. So you are not going to be charged with anything. All right, but this is what I do have to do. I am separating the two of you tonight, okay? I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other, relax, breathe, crying, because there's no reason to be crying now, okay? This is, I understand that this can feel like it's a nightmare, but you're coming out as the golden flower on top of it, okay? So, you're gonna be taking the van tonight, and you're gonna go somewhere else. I am going to get him lined up for the hotel room tonight. I want you guys to stay away from each other. For both of you guys the same. From what you told me and what he told me, you guys have a bunch of little things that are building up, building up, building up, and finally the little string that you guys were tight walking on the road tonight. Does that sound about right? So, I just want everybody to breathe, get a chance away from each other, go eat a meal, talk to your parents, whatever it is you gotta do. In here? Yeah. Just told 
this one. So, like I said, that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Hold on. This is Officer Robbins. Up. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Is this your cell phone that I called? Okay. Okay. Well, I, go ahead and save my number into that phone, and I'll save your number, or this number, into my phone. That way I can contact the on-duty, on after-hours person. So... Because I had, I literally had to Google it. So, uh, <laughs> perfect. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate your time. Yeah. All right. So, I've got him a hotel room tonight. So, here in just a minute, I have to keep you guys separated. For right now, don't contact each other. Don't wave at him. Okay. Do you want me to say anything to him? Because I can do that for you. You want me to let him know that you love him and that you'll see him tomorrow and stuff like that? I can do that for you. Oh, he's bad about that too. Okay, I'll make sure that he has a phone charger. Okay. And if I have anything else, please keep your cell phone on so I can call you if I have any questions. All right. Okay. All right. So just kind of sit tight for me real fast, and I'm not going to talk to you right now. Alright, Brian, a couple things. A couple things? A couple things. One, I got your hotel room tonight. Thank you, thank you. It's All right. outside. So, I like outside. <laughs> number two, and this is probably the biggest one. She claims that she did not have intent to hurt you when she was slapping at you. So, technically speaking, it does not fit the letter of the code. So, I am not going to be charging her with DB plus parts. Exactly. So, this is what I am going to do, however. I'm not going to release you guys together. I want you guys to stay away from each other tonight. Okay? She's agreed to it. Take some time for yourselves. You guys both have the exact same story as to what led up to the incident. So, taking some time tonight, I specifically. Really Taking tonight away from each other is going to be the major breaker in all of this. I think that'll help you guys, especially tomorrow when you guys meet up. So she does have a couple of messages for you. One, she says she loves you. She wants, she's looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Two, don't forget to cell phone charge. Yeah, good. He watched me fumble around the entire three laps around the car to find one. Yeah, find one. Find one. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is, is I don't want you guys to contact each other. No, okay, unless, I was running, unless world when he, when he said that, I, that she going to text me or whatever, I was going to send her a message to say, please don't message me, but I love you. But yeah, but tonight, but tonight, don't do anything. Yeah. And I'm She's passing on her love and saying goodnight and stuff like that, all that, and, and the stuff that I do to my wife too, okay? So, I appreciate a couple of just, just, <laughs> <laughs> so, don't, just try to not contact each other unless, like I said, no, I'm first chattering, something happens, you guys have to jump in the car right now and drive back to Florida because something happens. Exactly. Other than that, just mm -hmm. you'll have meals about yourself. Take your breath. You're going to be in a hotel room watching TV. It's probably been a few months since you actually got to sit down and relax. It's an air conditioning and watch TV. So take some time for guys. Yeah, take a shower, man. You, you got to change the clothes. You got some Tonys in there, right? All right, good, good, good. Because they're going to have everything that you need. Shit, camera condition, all that good stuff. All right. Our main concern is make sure that you have self recovery so you guys don't have to Okay. I really appreciate so, it. I am going to walk her over here to the car, okay? And if 
go just go stand over here in front of his pickup real quick. We'll get her out of here and I'll be right over here. Alrighty. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Absolutely. Alrighty, Gabrielle, you want to step out for me? As you can see, I have keys in my hand, which is good news, okay? So, something that I do, that I emphasize to him, and I don't know if I emphasize to you or not, don't text each other tonight. He wants to pass on the same message you passed to him. He's really looking forward to talking to you again, but I told him, and you, unless there's earth-shattering emergency news, don't text tonight, okay? Even with the good nights, I love you. He's saying good night now. He's saying he loves you now. And you guys can talk tomorrow morning, okay? He's gonna go to the hotel. I'm gonna give you the keys to the van. Or you will have it. Alrighty. So, here's that. I'm giving him a ride over to the hotel, okay? So, everything's gonna be okay. Will it be a far drive for me to get him in the morning? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not going to tell you where he's going to be at I, tonight. I know. Like I said, I, I want you guys to be separated. I, but I, I can just, tell you this. I just don't usually drive the van, so I just want to make sure it's not like far. No, 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 okay. no, no. It's, uh, okay, it, it's basically from here to Moonflower. Okay. Okay. It's not far at all. So, let's get you in the van. Let's get you on your way. All right? You want that Gatorade, by the way? No, thank you. You got enough water? <laughs> also, something I want you to know. Here, stand over here real, for, real fast for me. If you go over to City Market, they have a list of places where you can get yourself a shower for like four or five bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap. A place where you can shower, decompress, de-stress a little bit. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I just showered yesterday at one of those. Well, you didn't have today happen yesterday, so yeah, but I, I, it does my wife would... wonders. So when she gets stressed out, it's like, get in the shower. Come on, it does get in the shower. Really relaxing. Go take a shower, relax, take some time for yourself. And like I said, don't text each other tonight. Text each other tomorrow morning after your eyes open up and you're fully awake. Have your coffee or your morning routine, okay? All right, Jenica. You have a good night, okay? Alright, right. 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 You ready for a ride? Right. Uh, my door's open, just climb in the back seat for me. Yeah, you can put your backpack back there too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry about that approach, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's alright, it was, <laughs> it was an interesting pull in, so. Daniel, by the way, if I didn't no. formally introduce myself, I'm Daniel and 229, so if you hear that, you know you're welcome. 223, Ryan. See, I hear you guys all the time. I've never been places too much. So, what's your first name? Daniel. It was nice meeting you guys. Nice to see you. Heck yeah, dude. I got my own oh, phone hooked up to this thing. Yeah. Hey, man, it's not it's too hard to go a few hours without having anything interesting happen or anything to get the old blood pumping real good. You know what I mean? So. I stuck my hands up because I didn't want to scare you when you pulled over. Oh, no, no. You're. The thing that wasn't a traditional stop to say the least. So uh, don't feel bad. SO2 T9. didn't already know. Um, she did want to pass on her good nights and loves yous and stuff like that, okay? And she understands that I don't... I didn't tell her where you're staying because, like I said, I'm trying to keep you guys away from each other for tonight. Where did you say I was going? Say that again? Uh, where did you say I was going? The, I didn't... I just told her that you were going to a hotel. Okay? So, um, like I said, it's my request not legally obligated to hold to it, but I want you guys to take some time away from each other because it will make a no world idea. of difference. Oh, you're not in any trouble? You got handcuffs on? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you that I'm taking you to the jail. No, I told you I'm taking you to the hotel, so. 
like I said, my main concern, I told her to go take a shower like I told you to, because she seems a lot like my wife, and things that really works for my wife is when she gets stressed out to go take a long, hot shower, so I gave her a place to go where she can get a hotel room, or not a hotel room, but um, get a shower tonight for like four or five bucks, really cheap, so no problem. <laughs> well, I've got quite a few. Like I said, my wife has really, really bad, bad anxiety, and she takes medication for it daily. And sometimes it's just not enough. Sometimes it builds up and it, it happens. I mean, well, I will say this. When my wife got put on a medication, within a week, I saw a complete turnaround in her attitude, her demeanor. I mean, she wasn't nearly as aggressive or angry or anything like that. It was, it was a considerable difference in her day-to-day -day life. It, it made her quality of life better, even. You know what I mean? And it's made my quality of life a lot better, too, <laughs> because I don't have her being as stressed. I know that I, five and a half years of marriage, I know it's not very long, but at the same time, you learn a lot in the first five years. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Uh, I, would, I would say, well, we've known each other since the start of high school, but in, in our relationship, we've been three years. Wow. I used to I used to drive a truck. What's that? I used to be a commercial motor vehicle driver, you know, the big trucks. Oh yeah. And I took my wife with me and we would easily spend a couple months on end without going home or anything like that, being cooped up in a little eight by eight cage is what I called it, because you, you didn't have any time to yourself, so to speak. You didn't have time to you know, you're going through Arizona, you can't just turn off the road and go see the Grand Canyon or anything like that. So whatever you do too, it's like you get a person something like I'm trying to paint or something, I'm taking myself a snack and stuff. You know, I don't know. Well that was one of the major advantages of having her with me was I could say, Hey, I'm hungry, can you get me something to eat? She she was able because I was driving and she wasn't, she was able to go back, get into the cooler, make us lunch or whatever, you know. So there was that as an advantage. <laughs> if you ever think that it's going to be better to do this with one, I always go, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I think it's not better to do it. It makes life easier. Yeah. Have you been in this area a long time? Or how are you? I've lived here, I'm just shy of two years living out here, but my grandfather's lived out here for like 40. So I've been through here a couple of times. But, you know, growing up in California, have you ever been there? Yeah, yeah. It, um, uh, two years ago, we did like, a cross-country trip, and uh, we did like, all the highway one down. I love the high, I love driving the one. I absolutely love it. But... <laughs> We're really looking forward to getting back there. It's beautiful here, but there's a different looking at the forest. Come from like New York and you know the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. It's all trees and waterfalls and rivers, and you come here and it's gone. Well, if you hit the, if you take the 80 across to get into California, it takes you up over Donner Pass and into Sacramento, it, it's not any different at all. But you said you're going to be going up to Oregon to see her grandmother or her grandmother's friend. So you'll be probably, excuse me, you'll probably be coming down the five. You won't be able to tell the difference between California and Oregon up there. Yeah. Except no, for the awesome. fact that there's going to be a sign that says, Welcome to California. <laughs> but at the same time, since you're going to be coming from the east side of Oregon, you're going to be driving through Oregon and going, There's no difference between Utah. Yeah. It's actually yeah. desert in the southeast corner of Oregon. It's a lot of high desert atmosphere, like what this is. It's not the Red Rock or anything like that, but it's just, there's nothing out there for 120 miles, it seems like. Parks? Look, if you don't hit Sequoia National Park 
while you're in California, you are doing yourself a disservice. If you don't go and see Yosemite while you're in California, you're doing yourself a disservice. I regret not being there alone. They stayed there for, for three nights. It's, it's like coming to Utah. You come here with the intention of one or two days, and then it turns into a week, and you're like, well, what happened to the time? Yeah, trust me, I get it. <laughs> Building the van was so great just because the Nissan Century, if you, if you tried to camp out somewhere, you can camp in like a sleepover Walmart type situation. So yeah. Now it's all the other land, and it's, it's wherever you want. You're watching shooting stars, and you look at that. It's, it's, it's an obvious example. But yeah, sorry, my radio was going off. But uh, no, Sequoia National Park, there is nothing like it. Gotta see the General Sherman tree. You gotta go and see uh, Morro Rock and climb to the top. You like hiking, it's about a mile and a half hike. Well worth it. Awesome. Gotta do it. Um, it's really, really cheap for their tent sites up there. Do you have a, a National Park Service pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's um, like, thing is the dream is ninety dollars, no eighty dollars once, and it's like you go to three parks and already pays for it. And you've been to like eight, eight, fifteen. <laughs> exactly. Well, the other thing of it is, with that drive, if you go through Yosemite, you'll drop down into Fresno, and then you'll turn off to go to uh, Kings Canyon National Park. If you drive through Kings Canyon National Park, the road literally takes you th through to Sequoia National Park. And the Kings Canyon is actually bigger than the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. And it is a sight to behold. I'll tell you what. And, you're straight into Sequoia. So that sounds like and then, it, yeah, it takes you straight into Sequoias. And then when you get into, um, I think they call it the, I think they call it Sierra Highway still up there. But you'll take that down, and you'll pop up into a town called Three Rivers. That's where I'm from. Three Rivers? Yep. So it wasn't terribly far from Sequoia, right? Uh, my house, I think the furthest I lived away from it was like 12 miles from the entrance. Oh, man. There you go. I just hope you don't get motion sickness, because it's, it's, I think I counted it out to like 32 hairpin turns, and it's about <laughs> 25 miles an hour the whole way up and down. It's very, very slow. It takes about an hour to travel that 30 miles, 35 miles, whatever it is. But it's worth it. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna come talk to Tyson. Tyson? Yep. Officer Robbins Phil called for me. He did, yes. This is Brian Laundry. Alrighty. So he's gonna get you all set up with your hotel room and he's gonna take care of it from here. All right. Well, All right. Thank you so much. And like I said, just remember my requests. It'll yeah, make. No. I think it'll make a big difference in your guys' next couple weeks, at the very least. I really appreciate it. No thank problem. you so much for, for everything. No problem. It's yeah, nice to meet you, Brian. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. All right.